Hello, the Tito Fellows 2021 cohort. Very happy to be here with you and sharing in this innovative program. My name is Daniel Ofori Dampa and I have a background in industrial chemistry, banking, as well as guidance and counseling. Extremely passionate about enterprise, extremely passionate about you, and extremely passionate about youth development through training. And that is why I'm here this afternoon. I am an avid football fan. My clubs are FC Barcelona, FC Arsenal in the UK, and back home in Ghana, the great and wonderful Accra Hearts of Oak. We call ourselves Continental Masters. I really am very, very, very happy when I have a bowl of fufu, which I believe you would um, see perhaps in the next, uh, well, the next two weeks with lots and lots of granola soup. And I also love my Apeme Kotombri, which you may see today. I think that we're going to have a wonderful time. So, my Petito Fellows 2021 cohorts, um, we are here this time we're looking at setting up business in Ghana. And we want to look at some easy pathways as well as challenges. In the process, we would want to end up appreciating the environment and conditions for business in Ghana. And then we would want to note the informal business space and how it flows into the formal space and the interaction between the informal and the formal space. We want to obviously look at the setup processes for the formal businesses and then we would look at some constraints to successful startup of a business. As always with my training sessions, I would end with some anecdotes that would become assignments, friendly assignments for all of us. So let's begin by looking at the environmental conditions. What are the 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 the, 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 for the environment for starting a business in Ghana? Why should anyone invest in Ghana? Why should you invest in Ghana? Why should I invest in Ghana? So these are some of the issues we have. A highly stable political uh, situation in Ghana, perhaps foremost in West Africa. There's an over 400 million market, West African market, on offer. We have encouraging taxes and incentives. Abundance of well-educated workforce. There's existing infrastructure. There's an existing industrial base. A high degree of personal safety and a truly hospitable people. We have excellent sea and air connections with the USA and Europe. A dynamic private sector which is willing to partner foreign investors. There's availability of the stock exchange in Ghana and a thriving financial services industry. And last but not the least, Ghana houses the headquarters of the African continental free trade area. How wonderful. So, in going forward, we want to look at the informal because a good number of businesses in Ghana are in the informal sector. And then we move to the formal and we look at the mega businesses in brief. And I like a lot of visuals. So my presentation would have a lot of visuals. So this is a, 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 the thriving informal space. Now, what do we mean by that? We are looking at the tabletop enterprises. We are looking at the traffic and street hawkers. We are looking at the, 
the, the street markets, you are looking at the wayside markets, you are looking at the convenient stores, which is everywhere in Ghana. Every street in Ghana, in fact, many people are converting their, the front of their homes to convenient stores. And then we have the macula experience, which is where the informal um, space or sector interacts on a daily basis with the formal sector. Indeed, most of the formal sector are linked to the informal sector for distribution of their produce and their, their services. We look at the thriving informal space again visually. And there we are, you can see massive informal work going on. But behind this organized mayhem, as you will see, there are formal companies and organizations that are using the informal to push their agenda. Now we can say that the informal business is estimated 70% or more of numbers and combined value of business in Ghana. They are unregistered and all over the country and they normally register with the metropolitan or their area district assemblies and expected to pay taxes accordingly to them. And again, we have another picture of the massive nature of this informal sector. That is where any of us can begin with our setup. But then, once we move from informal and as we get bigger, we would want to become formalized. And we would ask ourselves which department registers business in Ghana. It is the Registrar General's Department, mandated by the Republic to register organizations. And mostly in Ghana, the formal organizations are the sole proprietorship and the limited liability companies. So for the formal registration commences with sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorships are the highest in number and then followed by the limited liability organizations. So what are the steps for setting up formal business in Ghana? Once you are going formal, you will need to register your business. Let's look at sole proprietorship and limited liability. In its simplest form, the sole proprietorship is the one that everybody starts with. And as the name implies, it is a proprietor who is the only one, a business managed by an individual. And as we said earlier, almost over 70% of the registered business in Ghana are sole proprietors. So we have a standard one, nothing big, nothing glorious, but then they are organizing themselves and selling specific items or producing specific items and so then there are some things that you would require the sole proprietorship is registered in accordance with law act nine act 151 of 1962 and then there are quite a number of things that you will require for you to be registered as a sole proprietor your business name your postal address your present name and the, 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 if you have any former name, your nationality, marital status, date of birth, commencement of the business, etc. But one thing we must note is that the registration certificates are to be displayed clearly at the principal place of business and should, or as they say, shall be renewed every year. What about the company limited by shares, or as we call it, limited liability company? What you need, or the things that you need, the name of the company, name of nature of business, address of the company, your stated capital, email address, very important tax identification number, which we call the TIN number of the directors, the shareholders, the company secretary, and the auditors, very, very important. And then the particulars of the directors, the shareholders, the company secretary, and the auditor. So the question that we ask ourselves, after 
you have given all these things to register general. How long does it take to register a business in Ghana? It is quite easy, but there could be delays if the documents for registration are not valid or they are not accurate. Typically, therefore, you would say between 20 and 30 days. There's an active digitization process going on at the Registrar General. So all manual processes are being digitalized, put online, so that it reduces the interface because there are hundreds, literally hundreds of people going there every day. So the registration of business now can be done online and then the forms for various activities can also be downloaded from the Registrar General's website, such as the periodic mandatory returns, corporate information changes, and then dissolution of the business entity. Now, when you have registered with the Registrar General, do you have to register with any other organization to continue with your business? Answer is yes and no. It depends on the nature of the activity that you want to be engaged in. Examples of such agencies are the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Food and Drugs Authority, Ghana Standards Authority, Environmental Protection Agency, Free Zones Board, Bank of Ghana, depending on the business you want to do. But there are others that are mandatory in addition to the Registrar General's document of incorporation and certificate to commence business, such as the Ghana Revenue Authority. Everyone has to pay his or her taxes. Social Security and National Insurance, Insurance Trust, everyone has to do that. And also the municipal assemblies, if you want to make sure they recognize your business. And so then let's move. After the sole proprietorship, informal we started with, we moved to the sole proprietorship, we moved to the limited liability company. Now, what about people wanting to invest big time, either locals or mostly foreign direct investments as they are called? Now, what do they do? We have the certificate of incorporation and certificate to commence business from the Registrar General, and then you proceed with that to the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, which is responsible for registering all investing enterprises in Ghana. What are their procedures? Pretty much uh, simple. You acquire the form GIPC form R1 in duplicate within five days from the date of orderly receipt of the failed forms, the GIPC will formally register the investment. But we must take note that while all the people involved can be foreigners, one of the directors must be ordinarily resident in Ghana. The minimum paid up capital required is 500,000 and 1 million for a trading company. And there we see, once again, my visuals, a very large organization. This is the, 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 the large scale that we are talking about. Now, beyond the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, we also have the Free Zones Organization. This was established somewhere in 1995 by an Act of Parliament. And what is the concept of the Free Zone Organization? It's designed to promote uh, processing and manufacturing of goods through the establishment of enclaves, enclaves and encourage the development of commercial and service activities at our sea and airport areas. In essence, the whole of Ghana is accessible for big time business for any investor, but the opportunity to export is done through the free zones company. And so they have various services that they, they provide, including providing information on investment opportunities, issuing licenses for those in the free zone enclave, assisting in securing other permits from related agencies, and so on and so forth. They give incentives, various incentives that they, 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 they give. Now, how do we start a small business at home? Having said all this, we would have to come back home and start for you and I. We do not have 100, 500,000 
We do not have one million, but we need to start because we are youth and we are passionate. How do we start a small business at home? Identify your small business idea. The idea should come first. Test your idea as a side business or perhaps as a hobby. Make sure you improve. Then you create a business plan. No. So, how do we start a small business at home? And the reason why I want to stress on this is that you and I may not, in fact, indeed, do not have $500,000 to invest as a foreign direct investment into the country. We do not have a million. But we can start as young people, as youth in Ghana, abroad, we can. Identify your small business idea. Test your idea as a side business or a hobby. Create a business plan and then you can decide. It is advisable you start as a sole proprietor. Determine if your business works well from home. By all means, reduce cash capital by starting from home. Then you can set up your office space and then get to work. But then you would ask me, what about the funding? Funding, small business, how do we start? No money to start a business. Well, we have a few ideas that we can all share. Some creative ways. And we are saying that identify unsatisfied needs of the people in your community, in your wider community. And either make orange juice something, make sandals something, or resell something to solve these identified needs, that's one. You can also sell or exchange something of yours to get your starting capital. Use your laptop, by all means. Smartphone, by all means. Your father's garage, your bedroom as your first office. Document workable plan and sell to your family or angels for free capital, in quotes. Utilize low-cost service. Share services and cross-sell your strengths with your friends. For instance, if you completed university as an accountant and your friend completed as a marketing person, you can cross-sell. So your friend will help you sell your product and you will help your friend account for his or her work. And then you can also offer free service in your target business, in your target area for a while. And then you establish yourself and then you can then move on. So we have some challenges by all means in setting up business in, in Ghana. The law does not permit foreigners to own sole proprietor business in Ghana. And it also stops foreigners from engaging in retail business. That's solely for Ghanaians. There is bureaucracy, as indeed everywhere, but I dare say perhaps a bit more here. And then sometimes intentional delays uh, for completion of processes. There's a high cost of credit. There's excessive pot charges. We have erratic power supply. We have limited access to, cap to capital, to credit, particularly medium and long-term credit. Very difficult to come by and very expensive. Then we have the perennial problem of the CD, the Ghana CD depreciating against the major foreign um, currencies. And then we have delayed payments from government. And I dare say government is the largest employer and government is the largest um, business um, maker. But yet you might have some delays there. Now, what are some of the business ideas that we just want to throw out? You can look at the, in detail subsequently. But there are some of them, bakery, confectionery, you can start a fruit and vegetable farming, poultry, guinea fowl, duck, particularly for the eggs. You can start a cleaning service in your community or area, your estate. You can start an event ballet, motorbike messenger. Just you need a motorbike and a box at the back. Brand yourself, neat, errand, runner, social media marketing, website designing. You can start a blog freelance or ghostwriting, maybe start free. You can go somewhere and you can give free trial for three months. You can be a mystery shopper for the big uh, fast moving 
consumer goods and you can be an event or planner. Build in your business from the beginning. Don't ever forget. We have stakeholders. And as you can see from the visuals, once again, there is a jigsaw. And so, what are some of these stakeholders? We have investors who want to invest in your organization. If you're doing well, you have the government that will require its taxes. You have your customers. You have your suppliers. You have your partners. You have your community. They are watching you. How friendly are you? You have your family. They are your bastion, your support. And you have your employees. Don't mess with your employees. And so, I want to end, as I said at the beginning, with five anecdotal tidbits. Now, this is what I want all of us to do. Friendly assignments. Are we okay? Friendly assignments. So, in your own leisure time, study the following anecdotal pictures. Enjoy the process of the friendly assignments. One, the three concepts of business. Two, money, money, money. Is it good or bad? Debate it. Am I safe with you? The young girls, two different cultures, crossing a bridge, dangerous. That is how business is. Can I trust you in this business partnership? Four, I told you my favorite food will be coming. Let your business smell good. That is how your business should be of good taste. And the last, the God factor in your business. That is a debate. Is it right to commit to God or you can go alone? And so with that, I say,